Game.selection is the way to get whatever the user currently has selected. Today I'll be showing you how to get it, set it, and manipulate it. Let's get started. I'm not even going to bother telling you what the first step is, because you know what it is. Now today I'll be showing you how to make a plugin that allows you to select multiple objects and put them in a folder, or fold them together. It's similar to the group button in the toolbar. So let's create a function, I'll call mine fold. We'll create a variable called selection, and set it equal to game.selection colon get. As you can see here, it returns a table of objects, which means we need to treat this variable right here like it's a table. First we need to check that there's actually something to fold, because the user won't always have something selected. There's a simple way to do this. Just check for the first object in the table. Now we'll create a new folder, and create a new instance called folder. Next we'll set the folder's parent equal to selection1.parent. This will put the folder in the same place as the selection. Now we need to cycle through the entire selection and move everything into said folder. So we'll create a pairs loop that does just that. Now all we have to do is set the object's parent equal to folder. Now we want the user to be able to find the folder easily, and we can do that by selecting it. And we'll use a function called set to do so. So we'll enter game.selection colon set. Now you might think in here we can just put folder, right? Well, actually that's wrong, because this function actually accepts an array or a table. So what we need to do is surround folder with curly braces. This effectively creates a table where the only object inside of it is the folder. So now let's add a way to use this function. Probably the most streamlined and efficient way to do this is with plugin actions, which I have a previous tutorial on. So I won't explain too much of what I'm doing, but it should be easy to understand. I'll create a variable called action, and equal that to plugin colon create plugin action. There will be three arguments to this function, the first of which is just an ID, which I'll say is fold selection control, the second of which is a display name, which I will set as fold selection, and for the description, I'll just copy paste something I already have. Now to use it, we can go down the triggers, type in action.triggered, connect that to the fold function. And now we have a working plugin. I'll publish this, close out of studio, and be right back. So now we're back in, but of course, before we can use it, we need to set the keyboard shortcut. So we'll go to Customize Shortcuts, look up Fold, Fold Selection is right here, and I will set mine to Control-Alt-F, just because that's kind of ergonomic and it's not currently taken up. Actually, just a quick pro tip, if you go into the Keyboard Shortcuts menu, you can see that a lot of these have already been taken. However, none of the Control-Alt functions have been taken, which is very useful. So if you're not sure which shortcut to use, just remember that Control and Alt is always open. So now let's use this plugin. I'm going to select this one right here, and this one right here, and group these shelves together with Control alt f and now they're in this nice little folder right here. Now the advantage of a folder over a group is that you can still, like, separately drag them around without taking them out of the folder. So it's very nice overall. Now, you might have noticed that when I did that undo, they re-separated again. And that's because the undo and redo functions aren't set up to operate with our plugin. In the next tutorial, I'll explain how to set that up.